guys, welcome back. We are in Pisgah National Forest today. It's a cold March day, probably like mid thirties right now. Got two guys here with me. Angel that you've seen from my Virginia Key video and Ricardo from my Colorado videos. And we're gonna be riding the complete Black Mountain Trail. So we're going for the full Sufferfest hike a bike experience. And on a separate matter, I don't know if you noticed that there's a new logo to the channel so i'm giving away stickers for my first batch i have a hundred of them i'll give them away until they run out so if you want one hit me up on instagram and i'll send one your way after i'd say an hour we are off the double track and heading into club gap this is the first climb we're gonna do a short one and it's a short descent and up to the intersection where we actually start the Black Mountain Trail. Made it to the intersection of Club Gap, Black Mountain, Avery Creek, and Buckwheat Knob. All these trails are great. But today we shall suffer. You see, getting to the top of this trail is a suffer fest. There's tons of climbing over rocks, water bars, off-camber terrain, and what can only be described as a web of roots. Anyone who doesn't ride a mountain bike would wonder why the hell we do this. But for some of us, the challenge of the climb is part of what makes the descent so great. I got stuck with a rock. And that's exactly what I want to talk to you about today. Why is it that we crave pushing our bikes up the mountain and hammering away at the pedals over stuff that most people wouldn't even want to walk over? Granted, most people start this ride in middle Black Mountain so that they don't have to deal with this initial section. So I don't know, maybe we're a little weird even for mountain bikers. Whew. First little descent of the ride. It's not very long, but it's already very pisgah -y. Full of roots and rocks and tiny little drops. We chose this trail for our first of four days in Pisgah precisely for its natural feel, both going up and down. There's obviously human influence in this trail. But it's one of the fields as close as you can get to the middle of nowhere, just being a short drive away from town. Additionally, it's incredibly varied, as each section of the trail has its own field grid. While most people start in middle Black Mountain, upper Black Mountain has its own charm from being ridden less. And that's something that drew us in to tackle the complete trail. In some ways, it feels very backcountry when you're riding this section. Didn't feel like hopping it. To me, it's kind of obvious that this isn't a rational thing. Why would finding a down tree add to the experience instead of taking from it? Of course, there's a balance. A tree every two minutes is annoying, but one or two throughout a four hour ride actually makes things more interesting. And despite the fact that I completely understand that as a mountain biker, I still think it's not very logical. Which to me means this really goes beyond just what makes sense, and it's something that's more feel than anything else. As we approach the end of Upper Black Mountain, there's a staircase that can be quite intimidating. Despite having been here a few times, I have never ridden it. So you can understand that I was committed to getting it this time. I just wasn't expecting to stupidly almost go over the bars on the first look that I took at it. What happened? <laughs> I hit that little corner there. Thankfully, it was really nothing major. I'm going again. That was good. I gotta say, it looks much worse from here. Oh, making it look easy. Now for the serious hike a bike. This is the entrance to Middle Black and it gets rooty and steep almost instantly. This is the section of the trail that will make you doubt why you do this. It won't just be the non-mountain bikers wondering what's wrong with you. You'll be in their camp. Not being able to get restarted or stopping every five minutes makes this both exhausting and a huge mental challenge. This section of the trail will suck the life out of you. This is the part that's just disheartening. You can see all the way up, just like goes on forever. 
water bar after water bar. Absolutely no way to ride it. It probably feels like you've been watching me push up forever at this point. Now that I'd actually cut most of the footage out, this is a long hike a bike that will challenge even the fittest of riders. Thankfully, what goes up must come down. And in this trail, the reward is oh so worth it. In true physical fashion, the descent will be just as rowdy as the way up. The only reason you don't notice it is because modern bikes are so capable that they just eat all the rocks, boots, and rollers away. But uh, we're not done yet. Hey, I said this trail was a suffer fest. We've got one more push to go to make it to the de facto snack break spot. A clearing on one of the peaks with an amazing view of all the surrounding forest from the ridge that we're traversing. Snack and picture time? Yeah. I love this spot. <laughs> After a short snack break, basking in the view, yeah. and taking the, if you didn't take these pictures, were you even here pictures? We continued on our way. I remember this big rock that we have to carry the bike over. Oh, that's it. I didn't think it was that close. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, that was a weird angle. <laughs> yeah, my foot slipped. Thank you. So yeah, apparently I can ride over all that stuff, but I can't get over a few steps carrying the bike. Go figure. So this is the reason we did all the climbing. At this point, the Sufferfest God have decided to cut us some slack. All that pushing, all that doubting, all that pain in your hands, arms, and legs is starting to pay dividends. The descent off of this part of the trail is long, fast, and rowdy. Still feeling like the backcountry, it's polished enough for you to be able to keep your speed up, but not enough for you to forget where you are. The idea of, I'm sick of pushing, or will this climb ever end, is for most quickly forgotten, and for some of us, present, but only as a small reminder of how great it is to reap the rewards of a long climb. That was great. Awesome, man. This is why we do this. You forget, or I forget sometimes. And yes, exactly as Angel put it. This is why we do this, but it's easy to forget. I really like it said this way because it's a great analogy for life in just a single sentence. For climbers, and correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, 
the summit is usually the reward. For us instead, it tends to be the whole journey. And it's one of those things that I love about mountain biking. The reward for a huge effort is not a point in time. It's a journey. It's the whole ride down that's the reward. I feel this applies so well to almost everything in life. If you put in the hours to achieve something, anything, expecting the reward to be a single thing, it may seem either unattainable or not worth it once you get there. If you read the reward as the experience from start to finish, including the part where you're in pain and doubting yourself, and the part where you're flowing down the metaphorical mountain of life, tackling these crazy trails will be incredibly fulfilling no matter what. But yeah, enough with the convince your significant other that your investment in mountain biking is good for life speech. Let's get back to trail talk because we're getting to the end of Middle Black Mountain. After the small flat spot, the character of the trail changes drastically, as the norm is no longer chunk but flow. Fine with rollers that you can choose to jump or to pump and wall rides abound, this section of the trail is fast, which after all the riding you've done is a welcome change. It was a tad wet, so I avoided some of the higher spots of the wall ride. But when it's dry, you can power over them without any issue, as everything is amazingly well built here. As you approach the end, there's two options. Make your way down to the parking lot, or add a small extension to ride by hitting Sycamore Cove. Not having been in Fisca for quite some time, the choice for us was nothing but obvious. The Black Mountain Trail ends with a nice rocky staircase which feels great to just send at full speed. Nice! So this is a Sycamore Cove and we have some more daylight left so we decided to hit one more trail on the way back to the car. So what you saw today was Avery Creek Road up to Club Gap, then all three sections of Black Mountain. Then we went up Grassy Road, and now we're going down Sycamore. So that was a complete thing today. And uh, it's about, I'd say just shy of 20 miles with about 3,500 feet of climbing. What's so great about it is that this, uh, route has a little bit of everything. You get a ton of tech at the top, and as you go down, it gets flowier and flowier and faster. If you've never done a Sufferfest ride like this, I hope this pushes you to give one a shot, within reason of course. And if you have, let me know in the comments what your favorite ride like this is. Who knows, I may eventually make my way that way. Woo I almost hit you. <laughs> no, it's my fault. Okay, this is scary. This is quite sketchy. No, no, I'm well balanced right now. Don't want to let go of anything. Whew. There we go. Back to US 276. Well, guys, that is it for today. I hope you had fun riding with us. It was an absolute blast to do this again. This is one of those trails where the, the real satisfaction comes from actually conquering it because just some of the hike bikes feel like they're a mile long, so it's unbelievable when you actually make it all the way over. And on the way down, it was so fast, so techy. Some of the sections were actually quite scary. So I hope you had fun with me today. I will see you for the next one, and happy riding.